So I've never seen any of the Matrix films at all because I don't know why. I really have no good reason. I'm lazy. I was like, okay, I should probably watch these films. The only thing I know about these films is that Keanu Reeves is in it. And everyone keeps saying that the first one was great while the other two are just okay or even bad and not worth it. And I'm also including Animatrix because why not? I don't know if it's a part of the universe or it's even canon. I have no idea. So let's start with the first one that came out in 1999. You have to see it for yourself. So the one thing I already really love about this film and kind of its universe is the Matrix itself and how humanity is kind of screwed. They're not really around. Only a handful of humanity is left as of this film. The way they set up AI and how machines have taken over humanity and how they lost. And then the way you have to take the red and blue pill and have you go in and out of not dreams, but sequences. All of that, it's cool. How AI might take over the world, the worry back in 1999 and how probably I'm going to assume that some people, what if AI takes over? I feel like that's what kind of this movie is part of it at least that first scene of trinity jumping up and kicking i've seen that all around twitter and shit clips of it and it was a pretty cool scene i was like okay this is cool kind of maybe i like it so the world that this movie sets up and just everything about machines and ai's that's pretty cool and then this movie has the whole like if you die in your dreams then you die in the real world i think it came from this film i think it may have came from another film but i feel like the matrix created that there's gonna be a lot of i thinks in this and there's a lot that's gonna throw at you at first because you have neo going through these things he has like a normal safe job but then you have agents coming after him and turns out it's not even real he's in this little pod thing as well so there's a lot that's being thrown at you and then you have to think about it afterwards or maybe during kind of the slow moments being like how does that work and whatnot and then they explain it but it's paced and move in a way where it's interesting and it'll keep you engaged and it has intrigue and mystery so neo before i even say that there's only three characters that i know and can remember it's neo trinity and morpheus the other characters aside for one named cypher i do not know their names at all i forgot about them they don't seem important maybe later on probably but so i'm not gonna mention any of them because i forgot about them but anyways neo he sees himself as this normal guy once he knows about the matrix agents that are dressed in suits and have sunglasses coming after him and then he gets calls by morpheus and then trinity has to come and look after him or come get him and his whole thing and arc in his film is that he's the chosen one because morpheus believes that he's the one that stopped this war between machines and humanity and save humanity and i didn't know how i feel about that at first because it's a kind of predestined or not predestined but the chosen one kind of trope but i'm fine with it it's not amazing it's more like okay they're going this route morpheus believes in him and it's a prophecy and i do like how his art kind of ends where by the end of it he's just like no i'm just an ordinary guy knows about the matrix somehow and you know normal guy who just somehow got involved in this long black cloak leather stuff i like that there's only one notable training sequence with him and morpheus that was a pretty cool sequence of them training and i thought it would kind of lead nowhere but no it actually went into conquering doubt and fear and having to let go of it but because neo is kind of this chosen character the character himself he doesn't feel interesting he looks cool by the way that's a big part of it and kind of this whole movie but in terms of personality and just kind of charisma and presence aside from the whole fighting and you know sunglasses and again long coat i would not be shocked if this movie influenced like long black coats in the late 90s and early 2000s because probably made it pretty cool i like neo's arc and his story and the mystery but the character himself is not really the most charismatic character trinity is a badass she opens up the film long jumping buildings but by the end she becomes a love interest because she doesn't know where she fits and belongs aside from the fighting and you know kicks a wanda and slow-mo what's her purpose takes a like into neo because she's a character that's lost she doesn't know again where she belongs so it's like well i'm just keep doing this keep surviving because that's what she does she just keeps on going and surviving maybe believes in this prophecy with morpheus but she's willing to go along for the ride because it's humanity side oh yeah also forgot to mention oracle she's this character that's kind of a sidekick neo goes to her just to reconfirm the fact that he's important somehow even though he he truly believes he is a normal guy she knows what's coming and then you got morpheus who's i guess the leader the training fights alongside with trinity and he just seems really cool he's got these sunglasses again these goddamn long coats and whatnot wants to put all of his faith into neo and he truly believes it some people if not most are like you're insane you're crazy you're putting all this faith on this one kid because someone said that or whatever he seems tired of this war and wants to end it so he's willing to put blind faith into neo and then these agents 
friends. Now, while they're not motivated by the best motives, they're still scary and threatening because they're so serious, programmed to get people that are out of the system or anomalies or just people that aren't willing to follow, get rid of them forever or no knowledge of the matrix because they're just programmed that way. Agent Smith, he just stands out probably wanting him to be in the final fight, have some big bad for Neo to fight to prove that he is worthy of being in the matrix, but also not just ordinary. But despite they're just kind of very serious tone is what makes them kind of cool and creepy. Maybe not creepy. Creepy is not the right word, but threatening. Everyone thinks that they're here to help humanity. They are the gatekeepers. And I think Trinity or Morpheus tells like Neo, if you see one of them, you run away because there's really no way to stop them. And then Cypher, the rat of the team, which sure, it doesn't come out of nowhere, but it's more like, okay, we need someone to be like the rat, the snake, the snitch. And Cypher is one of them. He's like in love with Trinity because he just does. He's into her and tired. Just like with Morpheus, he's tired of fighting this war. He's the one that's given up. But then, you know, they eventually get rid of him and whatnot. He's there to be the conflict and get resolved very quickly. And then there's the iconic shot or kind of sequence with the most well-known sequence and moments in cinema. And he like leans back and his bullets flying. Seen it all the time. Seen it everywhere. So I was kind of waiting for that moment. I was like, when is moment coming? And then they eventually save Morpheus, get rid of Agent Smith. It ends with, you know, Neo proving the fact that he may be important to the Matrix, saving the world. That's it for the Matrix. One last thing I do want to ask and I did write down on my notes is why was this movie so important? Why was it so influential back in 1999? And I was thinking to myself, why is that? And actually, you know what? I can just Google this. I'm gonna Google why this movie was so important because I'm still trying to figure that out. Time for Google. Hold up. one google search later and film editing sure i can see that visual effects definitely see that there are some things again technology back in 99 there are some things that look real smooth and doesn't look rendered out but as of 1999 best visual effect this oh yeah sound whenever they shoot bullet it goes in that slow mo trinity and watching this on hbo max with headphones on was a real treat because it sounded cool i guess going back to the whole visual effects i guess it's also the first time again my knowledge of cinema is very limited but i guess this is the first time in cinema and ever i'm just gonna assume that they use visual effects in a way that was not just you know an animated movie or anything like that they used it in a way where it's like you know what let's do creative things like that bullet thing i'm gonna assume that all of that was cg and then i guess also a part of it was the whole ai stuff ai is not a thing or at least i think wasn't a thing back in 99 so having a movie about that probably to the whole world at that time would have been a really good question to have and this movie did it ai now is just kind of phone siri and whatnot like it's definitely going that direction i'm gonna assume is what made it so important important to cinema to sci-fi and influenced cinema in general so in the end the matrix movie's still pretty damn good it still holds up i don't think it's great i feel like it's a movie where you would have to be live to see the hype and see an excitement because no one's ever seen that again bullet scene and this movie means a lot to a whole generation that i was just never a part of so i'll never understand that part of it but as of watching it for the first time it's still a pretty damn good movie then Matrix Reloaded was released like three or four years later. It's a clear decline in quality, or maybe not quality, but in terms of the story and deconstructing what is the Matrix, I don't think that was a good idea at all because there's a mystery and intrigue to it. The first one had all of that, it had the whole like fake out of the world being an apocalypse, robot apocalypse, machines are taking over, it's 2199. In this movie, they're just like, okay, why is Neo important? Why is there a prophecy? Why he needs to stop this war? Why is everything happening this way? The film brings up these questions and these are good questions but I don't think it helps so they introduce a bunch of new characters and a lot that I don't really care about Morpheus old friend there's that commander guy do not care for anyone else except for our main characters and maybe Monica Bellic or Bellic I don't know how you say her last name but she's in this movie she helps quite a bit there's even a story with Link a guy on like the ship or whatever that helped him back in the first film he goes back to his house I think between him and his wife or girlfriend and it could be interesting but I just don't really care about it there's a bunch of these characters these arcs or mini arcs gonna get paid off probably in the third film but i just don't really care for that even jada smith she's in here because i don't know she just is and because every sequel or not every but seemingly every movie after its first they want to go bigger so there's more shots of like the machines and whatnot there's this building that they go to where they go to sleep it's like this community while it's cool i also don't care about it and then monica decides that she wants to help neo and the team because she wants to betray this one guy who owns like this bar like there's too many characters but she wants a kiss from neo and then 
and obviously there's this thing between Neo and Trinity and jealousy comes along but either way she's there for that brief moment because actually you know what I don't know either way that led to like a really cool fight sequence the one in like that big room and the one other fight sequence where after Neo talks with the Oracle all of the Agent Smith clones they come in and fight Neo that was a really cool sequence that sequence and that other one in the building were better fight sequences than anything in the first film these two are the best the amount of clones that there are and the him using all of these techniques really cool yes it is a bit dated they look again real smooth their skin is smooth aside from that it holds up and it's still great and then the second one and that big building or whatever using all those weapons on those walls and then i don't think it didn't look cg maybe some parts but it looked practical they were on wires and whatnot and they just had a fight sideways or something like that because it did not look cg and then that one long chase between the ghost brothers i don't know what their actual name is they wear white they have white hair they can go through things so i'm just gonna call them ghost boys or ghost brothers because i forgot their name it leads into this long chase sequence which is also another really standout and good moment how agent smith is back through cloning and how he touches people and then they just turn into clones they try to explain that because of neo but i don't know i, I didn't really care it's as if they needed him in the movie because he was a threat in the first one let's have hugo weaving back because he's a cool actor we'll just mix something up that's what it felt like to me and then neo has these dreams or i guess nightmares where trinity's dying and he wants to stop it and prevent it but there's like this thing or kind of prophecy thing where it's like no one really knows why this is happening it just happens and they just kind of accept it and that's neo question and arc of him going to her oracle him questioning why these things happen he keeps having these nightmares and dreams of trinity falling off her roof getting shot and falling down which almost happens because agent johnson comes in he's the one that actually kills her but then through shenanigans and whatnot he meets the architect the one that created the matrix and this moment it's essentially saying that it's destiny it's predestined it's pre-planned this is the sixth iteration of the matrix and it's kind of this game or not game but neo and all these characters are just rats in this bubble and the architect is just like yeah i watch and i don't know they are deconstructing the matrix which i don't think is a good call because it makes it pointless it really does being the chosen one neo's the chosen one which now makes sense the arc and story of being the chosen one i don't mind but in the matrix it feels weird every character in this film they just have no choice but then neo's given a choice to essentially destroy this world prevent this war or whatever or reboot the matrix and instead he goes a different route and saves trinity and he does trinity does not die but that will become a butterfly effect later on in the third film and i don't think they explain how he got his new abilities i don't think i may have missed it destroy these machines he did block all those bullets in that house and then that is it for matrix reloaded i'm probably missing all of these other side characters arcs and whatnot that one fan the number one fan that loves neo trinity and this other person there's that one guy bane he comes back around but there's all these little stuff all of these characters being introduced that don't need to be there and they went with the chosen one route which i wouldn't have mind but then the lore in the matrix itself i don't think it works because it just feels weird i don't know i just don't like that chosen one arc being in the matrix too much characters i think that's the big thing too much too much is going on so the matrix reloaded it's all right any matrix was released in between reloaded and revolution and since i'm going by the release date this movie comes third and i don't even know if this movie is even a part of the lore or whatnot i was just like oh wait there's an animated matrix movie sounds cool to have on the video so i was like why not talk about it it's like nine short stories contained in this one hour and 40 minute movie and it's pretty damn cool there's different animations for most of it the first two are a two-part but i think every short after that there's like a different hand-drawn animation makes it appealing to watch after each one ends you get a new story a new perspective of the matrix the second renaissance parts one and two again first two episodes or first two shorts of two parts and it's essentially how the war started how humanity essentially fucked up we are scared of these machines and we want to go war with them even though they are machines these machines are smarter than them they win the war they kill almost all of humanity and they have their own little community one ai is like guess what kaboom and the humanity just looks kind of dark and bleak there's all of these pods put all of humanity in these pots not to grow reproduce and eat i think humans even built mega suits which i thought was funny but it's a story about humans being overtaken by fear and that fear led to their downfall the third story program it's about this lady whose name i forgot about fighting this other samurai brings up the question of control and free will and how she doesn't really want to be a part of the machines even though this other person wants to be really cool fight at the beginning i mean it is a fight throughout with dialogue every now and then but it's a really cool samurai fight throughout and how this lady wins and then by the end when she gets taken out she questions whether maybe being controlled is better than 
than Free Will. So it's good mainly because of the fights. World record is the first one that I did not like. It's about running, essentially, like track and field, about this guy who wants to beat his own record. And I don't know how this involves the Matrix. One of the agents or something, they show up, freeze time or whatever to prevent this guy from beating his world record. But I also don't know why it's involved. How is this a part of the Matrix? But the running part was really cool. It was very, you know, slow, over dramatic. But the story itself, it was all right. Kid's story is the fifth one. And this is my least favorite animated. It looks really weird and distracting, which is the whole point of it, but not a big fan of it. This is essentially Neo, but on a kid, because this kid finds out about the Matrix. He asks the question on his computer. Once he goes to school, his phone keeps ringing, and then agents come by. Teacher gets mad. He has to run for his life. He runs throughout the school, climbing on buildings and whatnot. By the end, killing himself because he knows about Trinity, the Matrix, the agents. Instead of being captured, he kills himself. Ends on a very sad and tragic note, but it is retreading the Neo story just on a less grand way beyond wait what's this one i forgot oh yeah that's right this is the one about a girl wants to find her cats she and a bunch of these kids they go to this haunted hospital and everything floats and this one has the intrigue and mystery to it their nose starts bleeding but then it's not coming down because of gravity in this hospital that's really weird and once this lady finds her cat she stays there to just fall and float it's a really cool mystery to it and we don't really find out until the end where agents they just come in and they're like no one knows right okay no one knows and then by the end this lady misses that gravity space thing and and it's really cool they don't really tell you by the end they don't explain it which is good but at first you are confused it takes place in japan they don't really explain it it's more implied into what's actually going on which i have no clue but it was a fun short kind of creepy part of it a detective story now this is my favorite because this affects i guess the normal real life and you can see that for beyond and a kid story where so-called normal people normal world environments they're being affected by the matrix and we're seeing that but this story that's about this guy finds out that a bunch of these cops they also disappear while investigating this case turns out he meets trinity and the agents come after him people on train they start turning to agents and so by the end he has to die because he knows too much trinity tried to save him but couldn't do it he goes out guns blazing because he's a detective the matrix affecting this guy who's just trying to investigate this case it turns out he would be the one to die matriculate so it's weird this is the really trippy one where it has this metal animated look to it once they go into the matrix that's the big thing about this one really weird i don't know what happens i'll be honest there's an element of the whole normal world and then once they go into the matrix it's like this weird android bug thing and it's in a theater and i don't know man i was just kind of weirded out machines and programs they're still here they want to go after these people because they're out but it's weird that is all i have to say about this one final flight of osiris i think that's how you say it. either way this one's in 3d animation and 3d to me always looks bland so i don't like it anytime there's a 3d element to an animated story it's like i don't know man i kind of zone out but this one opens up with the sword fight with two people clearly into each other taking their clothes off and whatnot but they're in a matrix and this one also ends in a very tragic way where the lady dies by the end i guess the machines win before neo comes in i don't know this one also felt bland mainly because i'm not a big fan of 3d animation so most of these shorts were good they were fun they were a nice change of pace seeing different animations to it it was overall fun i didn't really expect anything from it and it's way better than reloaded you're in the story and then you're out there's no real investment the animatrix was fun it was good it was a fun like pit stop before talking about the third film and then lastly, Matrix Revolution, the last film, or not the last, but the most recent film until Matrix Resurrections came out like the same year, six months after Reloaded. This and Reloaded was all planned out, was meant to be this. And so they had time, maybe not all the time in the world, but a good amount of time in between 1999 and 2001. At the end of it, there was a good amount of time for the Wachowskis and everyone to come up with something. And they came up with six iteration and Reloaded. And this one is boring. Like Reloaded was not boring. It still had three cool things fight sequences this one has the neo and agent smith fight aside from that this movie's really dull it's so boring i'll be honest i don't know if i'm gonna be able to talk about this in a good way because i kind of zoned out like halfway through i was like we're going back to link and jada smith comes in and there's like a bunch of people now it's like yeah you know i want to talk about that it's so boring i don't know i was really out of it for this one especially after watching animatrix coming into this one being like oh shit that's right you know destiny and you know saving trinity and whatnot so neo is 
stuck in between two worlds how this happens i have no idea because i didn't pay attention but either way he's stuck on this like train thing and it's being protected by this homeless guy taking orders from that one guy that's with monica forgot his name i'm forgetting names okay both trinity and morpheus go to the oracle for help they eventually get neil out and between all this time myth is busy turning everyone to clones and whatnot he's been doing that since the second one but it becomes even more but then he just keeps creating more and more and more by that point i didn't really care he even kills his own mother oracle or turns her and oracle is the one that knows everything she knows everything that's pre-planned she allowed this to happen she knows neil will probably defeat him by the end and then the bane character this is the only side character that will bring up because i find it important but like there's scenes with like morpheus and the commander and all these other characters don't really care about them but bane turns out he's essentially smith in disguise earlier reloaded he got like a knife almost wanting to kill neil he backed off waiting for the right time and i guess this was the right time because kidnaps trinity they get rid of him but that's really it because that felt like a plot thread that they would continue in this film which it did pay off but that would be something else other than smith but they just turned to be agent smith now one thing i do like is trinity dying despite neil seeming her in the previous film it is predestined it is destiny it is planned to happen so despite his efforts nothing changes giving him no real choice in the matter whatsoever just like the oracle and the architect said you really have no choice in the matrix and just deal with it essentially and then the really cool fight happens it's raining neo and smith they fight it is a cool fight even though the first half of it is dark and flashy you can't see i mean you can but it's like why is it dark and flashy but then the second half is way better punch to agent smith in that slow-mo shot that was really cool and then neo allowing himself to be touched by him in order to get rid of the other clones which are there to just watch the fight because they're all the same finally after three movies agent smith is finally gone he's dead neo doesn't want anything to do with him no more and the matrix is rebooted just like the architect said both the oracle and the architect have a final talk about hey you know what let peace happen for as long as it should and if there's people that want out of the matrix we will let them good way to end it by the end of this film i was like oh thank god like it was really boring so when it got to this end i also felt like okay you know this is finally over so yeah this one matrix revolutions it had a really cool concept in its first film it was really cool and in the second film they deconstruct it and in the third film it's the after effects the results of that film trinity dying letting smith kind of go on do his thing and whatnot neo accepting trying to resist it because if he does there's backlash to it so i don't mind those but the issue with this one it's a slog it's boring it's not bad again reloaded in this one they're not bad films they're just story decisions and maybe should have been thought throughout maybe a couple more years but they came up with you know destiny essentially pre-planned stuff and rebooting so it does leave the fourth film in an interesting place because there's already theories about it on youtube how maybe keanu never left the matrix or maybe because he's so bored with normal life so he wants to go back into the matrix which is why he eats red pill but bunch of theories and whatnot but as for matrix revolution it's all right if I were to rank these, then the last is Revolution because it's boring, it's not bad, cool Agent Smith fight, that's really it, lots of other characters I don't care about. And third would be Reloaded, while it's a downgrade, it still has three amazing sequences, the clone sequence, the long chase sequence, and that building fight with the whole weapons and whatnot, that was really cool, and probably the best fighting in the entire series, but that's it, it's got a really lame kind of destiny thing going on with the sixth iteration of the Matrix. Second is Animatrix, it's just refreshing to watch, especially in between reloaded and revolution each story is interesting except for like maybe a couple they're interesting different animations made it refreshing to watch after each story and it's a fun time and then the first one number one is obviously the original though pretty good can definitely see the feats that it had back in 1999 and how it was back in the day the matrix and the franchise it's really interesting seeing how the first one was so good and it's seeing it just gradually be less and less interesting and just kind of boring and dull and like the animatrix was just a nice change of pace honestly i'm glad i watched it in between reloaded and revolution but now i am slightly excited for resurrections again i'm not the biggest fan i don't know what it's like having to sit down in theaters back in 1999 experiencing this film for the first time and how influenced it was to just pop culture and cinema in general it and seeing how it picks up if it's truly a reboot or a sequel or it's just a better story more interesting story having more intrigue and mystery and possibly just maybe not have the chosen one arc that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching